Prism Launcher is among the best launchers for Minecraft. This launcher is perfect because it makes separate instances of Minecraft to keep all of your mods and mod packs separate. No more painstakingly managing and moving all of your mods, worlds, and settings. Not to mention that it makes installing everything you need super easy. No matter who you are, I recommend for every Minecraft player to use a launcher such as this one. It may be intimidating to use this launcher for the first time, so I'm going to go super in depth in this tutorial. To download the launcher, go to the official website downloads page, linked in the video description. Choose the tab for your computer's operating system. Most of you will be on Windows 11, so click the installer.exe download here. If you're wanting to play Minecraft on multiple computers, then download the portable file instead. This will allow you to put Prism Launcher on an external SSD that you can plug into any computer to play on. Just unzip the download into a folder and run the prismlauncher.exe file to get started. But getting back to the installer we downloaded, after running it, you will get this setup window. Click next, leave the default settings and click next. I would recommend keeping this file location default and if you want to change it, then do the portable install that I mentioned earlier. Finally, we can click install. For the quick setup, you can choose the language the launcher uses, then you can customize the look of the launcher. I personally like the flat white icons with the dark widgets. The most important setting though is to choose one of the cats. Next, you need to sign into a Microsoft account that owns a copy of Minecraft. Prism Launcher is not cracked. You can click the sign in button and it will open your browser where you can sign into your account. Once you're signed in, we can get into the launcher. Let's go over the launcher settings. Click the button at the top to open them. Here, I like to enable check for updates automatically. You can also change your downloads folder if you need to, but leaving it at default is recommended. We can click over to user interface where we can change our themes again. You can also add custom themes by clicking this folder and dropping a theme in that you downloaded. I'll link you to the custom themes in the description. Click releases on the right side to see all the files. My favorite one is Breeze Dark. Click it to download. Then extract the files and put the theme into the folder that opens when you click this button. Click refresh and then you can select it from the list. You can also add an image of your own instead of the cat. Click the button and put an image in this folder. It's best not to do a big image. You can also change the transparency of the image. All right, now let's click over to Java. Here's where we can choose how much of our RAM to allocate by default. Depending on what mod packs you play will determine how much RAM you're going to need. If you're just playing regular Minecraft or with performance mods, then you can just leave it at four gigabytes. For me, I like to give eight gigabytes by default. You can check how much RAM your computer has by opening Task Manager, clicking Performance, and then Memory. Here you can see how much you have. Just make sure not to allocate more than half of your RAM or you may run into issues. In my case, I have 32 gigabytes of RAM, so I shouldn't set this to more than 16. Remember, this setting is just for the default amount of RAM. If you install a mod pack that needs more RAM, we can change the amount for just that instance, but we'll cover that later. Next, click management. Here you can download Java manually. Prism Launcher actually does this for you when you download an instance, but if you download it here, you can choose a later version of Java. This might improve performance, but it's not necessary at all. Now go to accounts. Here you can add multiple accounts and switch between them easily. You can set the account you want to use by default and also manage the skins and cape for your accounts. This makes switching skins super easy. Let's cover how to migrate your instances or saves from a launcher you were using before. If you're coming from a different launcher such as at launcher, then you can simply export the instance and drag it into Prism. Alternatively, you can click add instance and then on the import tab, you can select the file. For the default launcher, figure out what version of Minecraft you were using and what mod loader you were using if you had one. You can create a basic instance or what I would recommend would be to click Modrinth and make a fabulously optimized instance that's the same version of Minecraft. This will give you fabric mods that increase performance and add other cool things like shaders. But if you already had mods downloaded, then do the custom option and pick the same game version and mod loader you were using. Once the instance has been made, click the folder button and go into the Minecraft folder. Then in the default launcher installations, click the folder button as well. With both of these folders open, you can drag over whatever you need to keep. The most common ones you want would be your worlds from your saves folder and your mods folder if you're playing with any mods. After you move those over, then you're done.
Now let's cover how to actually get started so you can play the game. Firstly, you can make your instance from scratch by selecting the game version here. If you want to play with mods, then you have to choose a mod loader, either Fabric or Neoforge for the latest versions of Minecraft. Find out what mods you want to play with and what mod loader they use. After choosing your options, click OK. It will make the instance that we can add mods to later. However, the second option would be to click Modrinth on the left and download a mod pack such as Fabulously Optimize. This is a Fabric mod pack that includes a lot of performance mods for the best FPS and other handy mods like shaders or a mod that lets you play your single player worlds with your friends. I almost always start off with this mod pack and then I add other mods later. So choose the version you want and click OK to make the instance. And finally, if you want to play a mod pack, then click the CurseForge option on the left. You can set filters, sorting, and search for the mod pack you want. Pick the version and click OK. Some of the mods included in these mod packs may block downloads from launchers, so you might get a pop-up like this one. So what you need to do is click Open Missing. This will open all the mods you need in your browser. These will install automatically, but you have to click on each tab. Once they are all downloaded, you should see all mods found at the bottom left. If you don't see this, then maybe you missed one of the mods or you need to change your mods folder location. Once it's good, click OK to finish the mod pack download. Now select the instance you want to play with and click edit. Under the version tab, you can change the version of Minecraft or the mod loader you are using. If you install a mod pack, you can click the mod rent or curseforge tab. Here you can update the pack or change the pack version. Head over to mods and at the top right you can click download mods. From here you can either select mod rent or curseforge to download your mods from. Mod rent is best for fabric mods and curseforge is best for neoforge mods. You can filter the options, change the sorting, and search for the mod you're looking for. Click the mod you want, then you can change the version if you need to, but it does default to the latest compatible one. Then click select for download. You can select multiple mods for download, and when you have everything picked out, then hit review and confirm. You can see what mods you selected, and it also added any mod dependencies you might need for everything to work automatically. If this looks good to you, then click OK. You can also click check for updates if you want to update your mods. Also, if you already have mod files you want to add, then just click add file. And if you select a mod, you can click check for updates for just this mod or click change version to reinstall it or change the version. Another thing you can do is disable mods with the checkbox or the button on the right. Switch over to resource packs tab and here you can do the same thing as you did with downloading mods. Click on the shader packs tab to download any shaders you might want and on the notes tab you can write anything such as base coordinates. For the worlds tab you can manage your saved world. If you have a world zip file then click add to add that file. To add a world save folder then click view folder at the bottom right and put your folder in here. Click data packs to open the folder where you can manage or add data packs. You can also join a world directly by clicking join world. This skips the main menu and puts you straight in. In later prism updates you may be able to download worlds and data packs straight from the launch but as of making this video, you have to download them and then put them in the correct folder. In servers, you can add any server you want and also join directly from here as well. The screenshots tab shows all of the screenshots you've taken in game and you can copy one of the images to share it easily. Click the settings tab to change the RAM allocation for this instance if you need to. The other settings are not necessary at all. That covers everything important for editing your instances. But that's not everything yet. You can easily group your instances so that everything is organized nicely. And if you mostly play just one of your instances, you can create a shortcut to launch that instance without having to open the launcher at all. To share your instance with a friend or to put it online, you can click export and choose one of the options. The Mr. Pack and CurseForge options are going to depend on if your instance has mods that are from Modrinth or CurseForge. If your instance has mods from both, then use the Prism Zip export. Finally, let's cover what to do if you launch your instance and it doesn't work or crashes on startup. Most of the time, you'll get a window like this one. It will give you an idea of what's wrong and what you can do to fix the issue. It's usually related to incompatible mods, missing dependencies, or version issues. If your game crashes without this error window, then it's a lot harder to diagnose. It's best practice to remove the mods you installed, make sure the game launches, and then slowly add back the mods until the issue happens again. Then you know exactly what mod is causing the issue. If you're still having trouble, then you can join a Discord server such as the official Prism Launcher server or my Discord server. When asking for help, make sure to provide as much detail as possible, including screenshots and the crash logs.
That covers everything you need to know to use Prism Launcher to its fullest. If anything is unclear or if I miss something in this video, then leave a comment or join my Discord server. Have fun and happy modding! Meow.